guys, welcome back. All right, we're gonna do a marker video today. So I have, what colors changing really dramatically? <laughs> okay, um, so I pulled out my Prismacolor Premier markers that I picked up on sale a few months back. I'm yet to use them, so I'm gonna try and use them today. I just felt like doing some marker stuff. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> the color keeps coming in now. Anyway, I am going to start with her skin. Um, now, the set that I've got doesn't really have good skin tone colors. So I've actually gone in and pulled out my Copics for my skin. So I'm doing Sand, which was E33, and Soft Sun, which is E21. So E21 is my main color. And this is going to be my shadow color. Okay, so basically what I do is I lay down my light color first, come in with my shadows, and then go back in with my light color. So I do two layers with the light color. Um, what I find is if I lay the first layer down, then come in with my shadow, then come back over the top, it doesn't leave a line. And I don't like the lines, <laughs> basically, which is why I do it. Okay, so I come in. And I've actually printed these this image on Copic paper. So it is a marker paper. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, the Express It Blended Blending Paper, I think it's called. Copic Express It Blending Paper. Works out to be about a dollar a sheet, which I don't think is too bad. So, Okay, so I've got my first layer of my light color. Now I'm going to come in with that shadow color. And the shadows pretty much are going to follow where the artist has put the shading down for me. Um, so this is an image that I've downloaded from Etsy. Um, and the artist, I'm really sorry, I'm going to butcher her name, is Daria Kakirsoy. Kakirsoy. Oh, I'm so bad with names, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, she's on Etsy. She's got a shop on Etsy and her work is just beautiful. Um, these girls are just absolutely stunning. Now, I couldn't decide between her, this girl here and one of her beautiful um, Egyptian ladies to do today. But I really wanted to do um, some colorful hair. So rather than doing black. So I really wanted to come in and um, do a fun pick, I guess. So that's why I ended up going with this lovely lady. So basically what I'm doing is I'm coming back in where that shadow was laid down and just working that blend so she doesn't have a lovely line where the two colors meet. Okay, so obviously that's wet um, and that does need to dry. So we'll come back and have a look at her neck in a minute I'm gonna move on to her face okay so same thing uh, working in on that light layer first and I kind of work or try and work um, in sections so I'm not putting too much area down because I don't want the color to dry I want them to be wet when I'm applying that second color with the shadow so yeah, I'm kind of working in, and you've got to work quite quickly if you don't want it to um, dry too quickly. And you still want to be able to blend. So I'm just following in where those shadows are. Then you go back in with your light and start blending that shadow work out with your second layer of the light color. I just I don't like the lines that you can get with your Copic markers. This just, that's yeah personal preference. Some people do, and that's fine. What I am going to do while that's wet is I'm going to come in with my Prismacolor Premier Color, and it is PB170 to do her bit of blush in here. So I'm just going to drag it on. It is like a pinky. Um, color. Okay, 
so once I've got that down I'm going to come back in with my light color again over the top and they do work seem to work okay together which is cool because um, I know my Ahuhu's and Copics work well together I guess any alcohol marker is gonna work you know with um, with other alcohol okay so I'm gonna come in on this side now again coming in that light color first and we're trying to stop where she would naturally get lines anyway so if it does happen to become liney it's not going to be you know too much of an issue so again to blend that original line I kind of just come over the old color if that makes sense <laughs> So I'm just coming in in any of those shadowed areas. Now because this side of her face is more open, she is going to have less of that shadow on this side of her face. So now I come in, start blending that shadow in. Okay, now I'm going to come in with her blush, again up from that side, pulling it down, kind of feathering it because you want it to be able to blend nicely in um, on her cheeks there. And I find if you feather the ends, you've got more chance of blending it than if you um, go in with just solid lines. So I kind of feather it out. And then pull your lighter color the same way that your feathers go um, and I find that's the best way to get it to kind of blend more seamlessly okay next bit looking good okay Now I will add some um, makeup to her, but I want to get that color down first. So you still want to see that skin tone underneath. This one is getting a little bit dry, so I do have another one there. So if you see my pen change, it's not um, that I've changed the color. It's just that this is a Copic Chow, so it is the smaller one. Um, and the other one that I've got is a Copic sketch, no Copic, yeah Copic sketch. Um, so the pen does look different. <laughs> Just so you guys are aware. I haven't changed the colour. It's still um, the soft sun. Okay, so go in with my shadows. And again, anywhere that I kind of want to blend it, I start to feather it or start to lift my pen um, just like I would with my pencils to kind of blend out that, um, that color. So yeah, definitely um, do your feathers. It's the best way to get it to blend. So coming down.
Now this side of her face is going to be darker because you've got that shadow um, with her head tilted. So you're going to see more shadow on this side. Start working that color out. And again, you're dragging it the same way that you had your um, shadow color pull. This marker needs some love too. <laughs> She's a bit dry. I'm just going to switch to the sketch. So it's the same color, it just is a little bit juicier. Work on that angle. Okay. So as she dries, you'll start to see that a little bit better. Now I can still see a bit of a line up here, so I'm gonna try and blend that out a bit. Now I'm going to move on to her arms. Okay, same thing, coming in lighter colour first. And then in with your shadow. Um, something I do too is try and keep as much as I can the markers the same direction um, same thing when you're coloring with like your water base markers you want to keep them going in the same direction otherwise you're going to get more lines um, than necessary and it does make it harder to blend so I keep trying to you know the consistency um, of going the same way basically so for example I've gone sideways on this um, with her hand so I'm going to continue that sideways motion. I'm not going to swap and go um, into up and down strokes. I want to keep it the same um, way that you're going. Okay, going in with my darker color. Um, now because the under arm of the underneath of her arm is going to be shadowed, I'm going to come along that bottom edge and flick up to shadow. And then this part of her arm will be the bit that's in the shadow here because it's under. There we go. So now I'm going to come back in with that lighter color. And same thing, flick up to blend that shadow out. this side I chose to go sideways I'm gonna go sideways I'm not gonna go up and down I'm shocking for getting outside the line too guys with markers <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> I suck okay so with her hand the same thing it's gonna be underneath because her hand is down so we're gonna come down along that base edge 
base it underneath the finger line. Her thumb is underneath her hand, so it's going to be more shaded there. And then the bottom of each finger is where you're going to see the shadows. So again, working same direction. Next one. I really like this image. I get like the colorist vibes from her. I just feel it on so many levels. She's so trendy. Look at her. She even got the mum bun happening. I love it. Pretty much how I wear my hair every day. Being a teacher too, I don't want to get knit, so I put it, put it up in a bun. But it's funny because when I do wear it down, the kids are like, oh my god, you actually have long hair. Yeah, just don't wear it out. Again, following where the shadows are going to be. Um... She's given us a pretty good direction for where the shadows are going to sit, which is awesome um, in her shading because obviously, you know, being grayscale, you're going to be able to see that. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much just following her shadowed areas. The reason it's shadowed up here is because her hand is up. So her arm is going to be blocking some of that um, light from getting in there. So it's on the bottom and on the top of this arm. Whereas this arm, this is all light hitting there. Okay, so come in with that lighter color. your second layer sometimes you do need more than two layers too you might go oh you know what I actually think I've blended that shadow out too much you can come back in with your shadow again go back in with your lighter color again and build up those layers you don't have to do it all in one go build those layers and that's the magical thing about um, alcohol markers as you can layer them then you can even go over with pencil at the end which I probably will do to get a little bit more detail in there um, I do try though with my markers to get as much detail as I can in there um, purely because this paper is super duper smooth um, it does make it hard to get the pencils on there sometimes so I do try and just go in with as much detail as I can with the markers first. Um, same thing when I do my marker work, I like to have when I, exactly like when I do my pencil work, I have my darker color, my lighter color, and my medium color. Um, so I am using all three when I'm doing that. So there she is. That's her skin done. Okay. Mm, what I should do now... What I, mm, I think I might do her hair next. So I'm thinking... Hmm, maybe some pink hair. I haven't done pink hair in a long time. Okay, let's have a look what colours we have in the pinks. Let's have a look. Let's get our test sheet out. There was this pink which I did like. Let me see where she's gone. I think it was this one. Uh, let's have a look. There's a couple of different pinks. Okay, so there's this pink here, which I'm digging. 
Then we've got... Um, I can't tell which end is which on these. Ooh. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, girl. I think we're going to have to do them. Uh, that's really the three. Then there's this colour, but it's more brownie pink. Okay, okay. I think we might go with those. And they actually don't look like they will do too badly together. Okay, so what I do with my hair is pretty much the same thing. Okay. So, let me just find... Which one was the darker? That one. Okay. Dark, medium to light. So I pretty much do the same thing. Start light and then working with the dark, medium and then over with the light again. So let's start with putting the light down first. Oh, these will work much nicer on this paper than the computer paper. <laughs> Holy dooly. Man, computer paper just sucks them up. Oh, it sucks any ink, I guess, but. Oh, girl, look at you. Loving the pink. Ooh, pretty. Okay, okay. So that's the lightest color in there now. So then what I do so come in with my dark, start at that root, start pulling it down. So all of this is going to be dark because it's under her headband. And then this bit here that slightly comes underneath that hair will be dark. Now again, you want to bring it in, feather, down, feather, down, feather, down, feather, down, feather. You don't want it to be sitting on there. You want to work it so it's coming in like that. If you leave it too much in one spot, you're going to mess up that sort of stripy hair look. Okay, so now what I do is I come in with my medium. Once I've got that dark down and start coming back over the top of the dark and bringing it down a little bit further into that light a bit. Pretty much exactly how I do my pencil work. Start working it down. But you're going back over the top slightly. You just can't do it too much because you get the medium start to lighten that dark too much and you don't want that. Okay, so now you can come back in with that lighter color again and start working it back through that medium down into your light. And there you go. There's your blend. Beautiful. Okay. Now these bits down here, because it is just the end of her hair, I'm going to keep them just that light color. Oh man, I wish I could have pink hair. It makes me jealous. Okay, so this bit here, I'm going to come in with the light and just an insy bit of that medium colour. I'm trying to feather it, but the tips in these are a bit thick. That's alright. We'll work it. Okay, so that bit and this bit will only have a little bit of the medium colour come out, I think. I love working with markers. It's so much easier on my hand. I'm going to have to stuff that up, so I'm going to have to bring that out a little bit more now. Okay, so come in with the medium. Oh, which is that one? That was a dark. Whoops. OK, 
okay. Just the teensiest little bit up here at the base. And then blend it back with your light so you don't get any marks. There we go. Okay. Again, this is just going to be the light color here. Now this bit here will have an insy little bit of that medium color. Mainly the lighter color though. Okay. In with that medium just slightly. In with that light to blend it through. Beautiful. Okay. So again, coming in with that light. Oh, I'm just loving the pink hair. She's so cute. I just love when people have coloured hair. It just gives me like the... Um, I don't know, like the vibes are just, oops, just throwing things around. Okay, so this bit, I'm going to come in with the dark a little bit up the top here. And then in with the medium. And then the light. Okay, we're going to go on with these bits up here now. So go back in with your light. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my dark. Yep, it's medium. And start from her head, well, her headband, not hair. And start bringing that dark color out. Then the medium. And then in with the light. Oh, she's so cute. I gotta think of what color to do her clothes. And her eyes. Oh, maybe blue. Mm, maybe. I don't know if I wanna do blue or green eyes. Okay, up here. same process light dark medium light light dark medium light light dark medium light it literally is a process like I'd follow the same thing so light dark my two boys are so loud this afternoon dark Medium. Light. Light, dark, medium, light. Light, dark, medium, light. There we go. And that is her hair on. Okay, so we've got her skin done and we've got her beautiful pink hair done. Um, and I'm thinking we match the Pussycat's headband and collar with these colors too. 
So I'm going to come in with the pink. Now I'm just using my um, bullet nib end because it is a smaller area. Don't need to use the brush. Dark. Following the same process. Light, dark, medium, light. Same thing, blending it out. I'm thinking maybe like a yellowy shirt, like a light yellow, like a baby yellow, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Little collar. She's like a circus cat. Super cute. My cat's basically a circus cat. The um, way she climbs around the house. Jeez. Top of the curtain. Top of the doors. That and the zoomies, my goodness. Never had a cat growing up, so she is like a super freak to me. They're the weirdest animals. We had dogs growing up, never a cat. So when I got my first cat, <laughs> um, I had a lot to learn. They're strange. They're just um, very quirky. Very quirky animals. And she's B I T C H as well. She's um yeah. She's just full of attitude, but I've heard that's what cats are like anyway. <laughs> Not just mine. Oh, see, I'm shocking with the lines. Look. <sighs> At least um, with this marker paper, they don't really bleed outside that line, the lines. Um, whereas if you're colouring in just like normal colouring book paper, God, they bleed outside that line. And I hate that. So I don't tend to use them in um, colouring books like ever because I hate that they bleed. It just annoys me. Whereas on this paper, it's, you know, you can get super close to that line and it makes no difference. So, all right. Now I'm thinking, yeah, like a light yellow. Okay, so let's have a look. I might need to pull something from another from my Copic set because I have a feeling these are going to be bright. Oh no, I didn't, you idiot. Okay. Uh, silly, silly, silly. Yes, yeah, so I think things are going to be too bright for what I'm thinking. Maybe bright might be good. No, screw it. Let's go bright. Let's go the bright. Okay, so again, I've got a light color and I've got a darker color. And I'm going to keep with the same method. So light, dark, light. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to section it out. Like I said, I find it easier to work in sections because the ink doesn't dry as quickly. Um, which means that I can blend out that shadow color and the highlight color a hell of a lot easier. So coming in with that darker colour. Yeah, I don't 
mind that darker color, uh, the um, brighter color now that I think about it. Okay, now in with my light. Light, dark, light. Okay, let's go the other side. I remember like Y2K, all our shirts, or well, some of our shirts had um, the sleeves colored and the other, <laughs> the main shirt of the color was like white or a different color. This gives me um, Y2K vibes when I'm coloring the sleeves first. Okay. Light, dark, light. It almost, um, use that as a little mnemonic to remember. Light, dark, light. Okay. So, these Prismacolor Premiers, I'm gonna mine them. I love my Copics. And I don't mind my Ohuhus, but these are pretty nice as well. Um, I got these on sale. I wasn't even going in to look for them. I went in to get pencils. I think I did it, shared them in one of my haul videos. And um, they were down from like $120 to $40. Bucks. I went, oh my god, what on earth? S last box, snatched it up super fast. Couldn't believe it. I like having a variety of markers and pencils because I get sick of using the same thing and I'm sure a lot of you are the same. Um, so when I saw those I thought oh my god 40 bucks hell yeah why not I think it was 36 set um, and I thought I can use them for a video anyway or for some of my videos so it saves me using a lot of my Copics. Um, obviously Copics are expensive. Um, yeah just an alternative marker to have a go at and um, share my thoughts with so I had to grab them especially for that bargain you know you can't leave <laughs> can't leave a sale behind my poor hubby I'm sure he's sick of hearing that oh but it was on sale I didn't pay full price anyone else anyone else the same sometimes I um We'll leave the bags in the car until hubby goes to bed and then I'll go and get them out or if he goes to work the next day It's okay guys, I don't get in trouble. He buys his own stuff as well Whatever we want We kind of just buy Which is hard at, <coughs> hard at um, Birthdays and Christmases and things because by the time it gets to that we've already bought what we want anyway <laughs> So it's hard to buy um, gifts for each other. We just kind of buy what we need or what we want as we go. And then you've got to think of more things. <laughs> That's right. I always think of something. There's always, um, you know, various art supplies that people have shared and I see and at the moment I want some of the um, distress ink because I use ink but the one I use is what I can get from my local art shop um, and they are water based but some of the cool things you guys do with the distress inks I can't actually do with them um, like with the water splatters and things like that so I really want to get those distress inks to do some of those really cool backgrounds that you guys do with them um, the inks that I use are more just for like solid colors so they like I use them a lot for um, sunsets and things like that because they they do make really good colors um, and they're really bright and vibrant but I can't do like a splotchy background or anything like that like you guys do with them so they're on my list. <laughs> oh, I like that. I actually really like that. Okay, let's go in and do her lippies. I think I'm going to leave her cap. I might do a light grey. Um, first of all, I'm going to do her lip 
tops though and I do want them Ooh, I don't know if I want them pink or if I want them more of a rosy pink which I don't think I have so I may have to pull a Copic out so I think that's too brown okay give me a minute oh maybe no maybe I could use her blush color let's go with that more natural and then maybe add a little bit of pink in okay I might add a little, little bit of that light pink in the shadowed areas I'm thinking Corners. Like that. And then come back with the peach. Yeah, I like that. There we go. All right, her eyes, 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 eyes. Oh, and I've just realized we haven't done her eyebrows. Okay, I think I might keep them more natural, like a brown. Oh, maybe. Yeah, let's keep them more natural. Okay, so I'm just gonna flick to make it look kind of like hair without going too crazy solid I don't want it to look solid there we go eyes I might do her eyes blue so let's have a look at the blues Okay, so we've got a light blue. This looks like a purpley blue. Yeah. Okay. Then we've got the medium and a dark. Okay. This one looks either maybe super dark. Yeah, it's more like a denim blue. Okay. Let's roll with that. Okay, so let's go in with our light blue first. I love that her little highlight in her eye is a love heart. How freaking cute. Okay. Now I'm going to come in just ever so slightly with that dark blue. Now what I do to make the eye pop also is at the end I come in with my black and I go back over the black. You want it to be super duper black. The blacker it is, the better it looks. It makes the eye pop. So I'm not too worried about it going on that black at the moment because I'm going to colour over it anyway. Kind of just blend that dark blue. And same with that white. If it goes over the white, I can come back in with my um, pen anyway and fix it. Right, so we're using the light blue now. Start blending that out. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. There we go.
Some blue down. Okay, her headband. I think I'm gonna go with the yellow again. Or maybe orange. I'm gonna come in with the yellow on her earrings because they're gold, going to be gold. Okay, so I'm gonna come in the earrings with the yellow because they're gonna be gold, you know, gold hoops. So it's the same thing, adding in those darker colours, coming back in with the light to blend. I'm just trying to think of what colour to do her headband. I'm not sure. While I'm... Mm. While I'm thinking, I'm just going to put a little bit of that light pink, the peachy pink from her cheeks on her eye lid as a bit of a makeup color. I don't want to put too much on because I don't want to take away from everything else going on in the picture. So I think I'm just going to keep it really simple and only do like the crease of her eye just like that okay while I think about the headband I'm going to do some brown for her table so let's have a look Yeah, let's go with that naturally brown. And I'm literally just going to fill it in around the papers that she's got on the table. I'm just gonna kind of feather it out because it's not really an edge there. So same here, just you know, to give it a bit of color and just show you that it's a desk more than anything. Out of here. Okay, I'm just going to do the pencil brown as well. Mm -hmm. No, actually, I might do the pencil blue.
Okay, pencil. And I'll just use a little bit of the dark tone that I used for her skin to fill in that little bit of wood on the pencil. Okay. Mm, I'm gonna give the cat light blue eyes. Come in with that black on hers as well. Okay. Now, her headband. I don't know. Or if I want to keep it the same as her shirt. Can't decide. Oh, I can't decide if I want to do her hairband, the yellow. Let me have a look at what the orange is like. Maybe we go in with the orange and yellow. I might do that. I might go in the shadows with the orange and then the lighter areas with the yellow, I think. So I'll start with the yellow colour. That's going to be my light colour. Okay, then I'm going to come in with my dark, which is going to be the orange. Just to give it a little bit of difference. But I'm still going to come in with that darker yellow but that's going to now be my medium color then come back in light dark medium light light dark medium light yep okay I like that okay light color first So I hope everyone's been well. Um, we've had a pretty crazy couple of weeks at home here. Um, something tragic happened last week. So last Monday we woke up um, and I went to let the dogs out for a wee and realized that there was two large dogs in our yard um, that weren't ours and they were actually ripping one of our chooks apart. Unfortunately my son and I both witnessed it um, and once we had gotten outside we realized that we actually had lost all our animals. Um, the two dogs had mauled our entire farm. The only ones that survived were our pigs and the piglets because they were in the pen down the back um, and the dogs couldn't get in there. But all of our other beautiful animals that you can hear in all my other videos are no longer with us, unfortunately. They were our babies um, and we were absolutely heartbroken. So I haven't been doing a lot um, coloring wise and things like that we took the day off school um, I kept my kids home I was so traumatized and upset I also didn't go to school um, and 
we had this local council come out because my husband and I actually chased the dogs down. Um, they ran off down the road when I started screaming at them to drop the chicken. And we went and caught them and brought them back and we locked them in our trailer, which is like a high sided trailer, um, and waited till the council got here and the council took them away um, and ended up coming back later on in the day and are doing a big investigation into it. The owner of the dog is pretty much going to plead not guilty. I don't know how that even works, but anyway. Um, and looks like it will go to court. So um, I'm going to be called as a witness for that because I actually saw the dog ripping an animal apart um, and possibly my young son as well. Um, but they also, these two dogs, um, who are, a, they are a restricted breed dog in Australia. So they are already classed as a dangerous dog uh, with the council. And they are known to the council for previous issues that they've had with them. Um, so they are going to um, charge the owner. I'm not sure what the charges will be yet. Um, because they are classed already as a dangerous dog, they should have restrictions in place around um, their housing and things like that. So depending what their investigation comes up as to what it is. But they also um, killed our neighbor's guinea pigs. They broke into the hutch and mauled them, which those owners actually caught them doing as well. So they will also be subpoenaed. Um, and then they also, the dog next door, who's a red cattle dog, was dragged through the fence. And this is like a chicken wire fence like it's I mean the hole's not big but it's not like that really small fencing stuff either but these two dogs grabbed her by the throat and pulled her through the fence and before she even got through the fence they had mauled her throat that badly that she bled out um, she didn't stand a chance there was no bark there was no sound um, they had already done too much damage to her throat for that to occur um, and they proceeded to drag her body across our front lawn across the neighbor's front lawn and across the other neighbor's front lawn so three houses down um, where she bled out um, the remainder of the blood in her body but the where they had dragged her because she was already bleeding there was a massive trail of blood um it looked like someone had dragged a dead body like you would see in a horror film it was uh, really quite traumatic um for all of us involved so i was extremely upset um we went next door to inform the neighbors of their dog um, and also the neighbors that chickens had been mauled as well um, and we all sort of met out the front while we were waiting for the council and had a big cry and um, were very disappointed in what had happened anyway by the time the council arrived I had put on Facebook asking if anyone knew whose dogs they were and I had numerous, like I mean several, people messaging me within minutes saying, oh, this is so-and-so's dogs. Um, they're known to get out. We have issues with them all the time. They killed our chickens. They've done this. They've done that. The owner's never home. Um, yeah, like numerous, numerous things that had obviously come up um, since these dogs had been at this property. Anyway, my husband and the owner of the dog who was killed um, went around to pay them a visit to see, you know, like what was going on. How did the dogs get out? Did they know they were out? Um, and basically wanting them to come and take ownership of these dogs and 
and responsibility for what they'd done because there was, I think we counted, I think there was about 17 animals that they had killed in our yard between our animals and the neighbor's animals. Um, so we wanted them to come and see what had happened. Um, they weren't home. Um, so hubby and the neighbor came back um, and somehow the guy's father um, got in contact with my husband and he came around to see what had happened basically. Um, so he could pass it on to his son because it turns out his son has been in um, rehab um, for the past week and was going to be there for another three weeks. Um, so he was unable to come and view obviously what had happened um, and there was, yeah, you know, that kind of drama ensuing basically because there was no way this guy was going to get around to see what had happened and witness all the damage that his dogs had done, um, which was a bit disappointing. But the father did a walk around and saw everything and we had taken photos and things like that um, as evidence if we were to go to court, um, as the council had told us to do. So anyway, the father came around and yeah, it was peace like it was peaceful there was no issues with him but yeah it was um a really horrible day really horrible week we had to then bury all our beautiful animals um you know like our geese and our ducks uh, were just they're just not babies like the chooks too but the geese we had actually rescued um probably about a year ago now and they're this just a breeding pair, like male, female, absolutely beautiful animals, beautiful. And husband and I always said, you know, they they've found their forever home. This is their forever home. They're going to always be happy here. Um, they're always going to have love. Like they slept at our back door. They wanted to be inside. They wanted to be around us. Literally every night they slept at our back door. And I mean, like if you opened the door, you couldn't get out because they were right there. Um, so when my big girl was the first one that I saw and my heart broke, like it was just the most devastating thing. Um, yeah, like it was, it was horrible. Um, I'm going to stop talking about it now because it just brings back those awful memories for me, but, um, I just wanted to let you know, because you won't be able to hear my babies anymore basically um they were quite boisterous and loud in all my videos so they won't be able to um interrupt my videos anymore unfortunately so yeah what i'm doing is bringing the blue of her eyes into other aspects of the image um I like using a limited color palette in this kind of way where you have maybe like your focus. So for example, her eyes would be the focus point and then bringing that blue pop in through other little tiny elements in the picture so that her eyes aren't the only blue that are in the image. It kind of brings the picture together um, more so than if it was just the blue eyes. So as you can see, I've brought in the love hearts, the pencil, the wristwatch, band um and then you've got her eyes as well so that's my thinking part of me all right do i have that's another thing they don't have a gray in this set i'm just gonna grab a light gray give me a second okay so i've just grabbed my Kobic chow cool gray number three um and i'm just gonna pop that on her wrist watch And inside the pussy's ears here, little puss puss. She is so cute. Just to darken those up slightly. 
And then I also wanted to put just a teensy bit in her eyeliner because I don't want to darken her eyes up, but I don't want them to be white on that line either. There we go. Okay, so... Okay, so what I'm going to do now is come in and do the black on her eyes. Now, I'm going to find uh, black. Okay, so I've got the Prismacolor Premier Black. I'm going to use the fine tip to pop that black back in there. So I'm literally just going to follow people that was already there and just fill it in that's it now this little love heart I'm going to come around and I'll fix that up with some white gel pen And it just makes them pop. See, that's the difference. Just filling in that little eyeball um, pupil, whereas this one's dull because of the, the way that the printer ink works. Um, it doesn't print, you know, as deep as it is when I fill it in. So I just tend to do that on all my, even in, in the, actually, even in coloring books, I'll go back in and fill in the pupil, especially on portraits and things like that. It just makes it pop so much more. A little love heart and literally just fill it in it makes such a small difference or small thing to do makes just the biggest difference in the way it looks and pops off the page there you go um, and same for the cat eye I'm going to come down and fill in her little pupil and then I'm going to add the white dot for hers back in as well. There we go. Okay. Oh, where's my white gel pen? Oops, that was really loud. Okay. Oh my god, look at this pencil case. It is so cute. Cost me a dollar fifty. Bargain. Okay. So I'm gonna come back in here with the white. And just fix up those little love hearts. Literally just filling it back in. There we go. One. Two. And then two little dots down here for her. One. Two. There we go. Okay, now what you could do as well, um, if you really wanted to, I'm not sure if I will yet or not, is on her headband you could come in with like your um, white gel pen or um, your black jelly roll glaze and you could go over that pattern that is on her headband. I'm just going to leave it, I think. Um, I like that it's a little bit muted compared to the rest of her. Um, yeah, you could also come in and do um, some, you know, highlights in her hair. I might do a couple, but I'm not going to go crazy. Um, oh, the other thing is I like to go over her lashes um, with my pen as well. So I will do that. But I'm just going to put a little highlight on her lip. So I kind of just find where I think the light will hit that bottom one. And I do a little line and a little dot. And then up the top, I just do a little couple of little dots there like that um, again for her hair just fine I like to find maybe like the lightest area and just pressure down pressure up pressure down pressure up just adding a couple of little ones in there and almost um, I kind of am putting it down that softly that I can drag and have like a line rather uh, like a broken line rather than just a solid line as well um, that kind of helps a little bit too um, 
Okay, so with my marker, my fine, t it's a fine point uh, permanent marker. I think it's Luma, Lum Stedler Lumo Color, yeah. Um, I'm going to come in and just go over those eyelashes at the top, um, just so they're super dark in that lash line as well. Um, I do like it to pop and it really brings those eyes out. If you'll have a look in a minute, it just, yeah, just really makes them pop. Especially when you've got um, a girl or an animal or whatever it happens to be where the eyes are the focus. For example, this image, you know, her eyes are the biggest thing and the first thing that you're going to see. So I want them to stand out. And literally just following what's already there. I'm not adding any in. I'm just following what's there. And I'll show you the difference between the two, the two eyes, in just a second, once you add that. Okay, so that's that side, and this side is still that little bit dull. Um, so I'm going to come in and do this side as well. You don't have to do this. This is just one of my, oh, I guess, tricks, tips, I don't even know what you want to call it, that I do. Um, on my pages not all of them just you know the ones that I think need it more so on portraits go so that's her lashes popped okay um, the other thing is I'm just gonna bring that lash line down a little bit too okay um, what was the other thing I was going to do I can't even remember Um, I think I've got smudges up here. What was it? Oh, uh, the other thing I do if the paper isn't white white is I can go back in, uh, probably so more so my colouring books where the paper is a bit off white and I actually use my white gel pen to go and colour over the eyes. Um, the white of the eyes just makes that pop a bit more too. Um, I'm just going to fix just that little corner up there of the pupil. Just isn't quite circle. You know, being a bit fussy, but that's all right. That'll do, otherwise I'll be playing with it for all night. Okay. Um, there was something else. Oh, I was going to put a little bit of glitter on her earrings, I think. Um, let me just have a look what I've got. Okay, so I've got... I can't decide if I want to do the gold glitter or jelly roll glaze. I might do jelly roll glaze rather than the glitter so they come out like a bit shiny okay so I just tap it a bit to get it rolling and yeah just fill in the earring I love the jelly roll glaze it just adds that extra something something to an image um, I use the black probably more so than anything and the clear but I'm trying to um, 
push myself a little bit and use some of the um, coloured ones. Since I own them, so I may as well use them. Cute. I won't take that all the way to that hair because I've just noticed it has sort of played up there with the pink a little bit. But that's okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so that's the glaze on the earrings. Cute. Now I kind of want to put the clear on her eyes, but I'm worried that it's going to play up because it's kind of made that pink run funny. I might just test it. I'm scared it's going to ruin her eyeballs. Okay, let me have a look. Mm. Has a little bit. Okay, well, if it runs, <laughs> you guys have seen it pretty much finished now anyway. So, just touch that and ruin that. Okay, <laughs> let's just do it. I'm going to have to flip her around so I'm not touching my hand on her earrings because I'm hopeless like that. Okay. Let's go in with the clear on her eyes. Let's make that blue pop. I'm just thinking in my head whether I go over the black as well. Um, let's just do this first and then if I don't like it, I can always go back over the black. No, I feel like I need to because it's not really shiny. I just got to watch that hand on that yellow. Okay, I'm going to do it. I just got to be careful with that white. I know it looks milky, but it will dry clear. What else can we add a little bit of glitter to? Maybe put, oh, I might add some glitter to the cat on her little bow. This is a bit I like. I like um, going back <laughs> and putting some detail on. Okay, let's do her little bow. Let me get my colours. Okay, I think I might just use the glaze instead of glitter. Mm, but then I also want glitter. Uh, let's just go with the glaze, I think. Let me just test the pink. Oh yeah, that's nice. Let's do that. Okay. So we're going with the glaze. For her bobo. And then I might put some glitter on her bow tie instead. Okay. So the glaze jelly rolls just, when they dry, they still give it like a shine. Um, which is really cool. I like it. Um, I'm a big fan of the... Oh, what do you call it? Glossy accents as well. I use that quite a bit as well. Okay, so let's put some glitter on her little. Oh, I don't know because that's going to cover the lines underneath, and I don't want to do that. Okay, let's just put some lines with the glitter rather than do the whole thing. Sort of like where those um, dark lines already are. Like that. So we've got 
her bow and a little bit of glitter on her there. Um, and why not, if I've got a blue, we'll do the love hearts. I don't have a blue glaze, so we're just going to cover it with the clear. <laughs> Pardon me, I've got the hiccups now. Okay. There we go. Super cute. There we go. All right, and I think we are done. Okay, there she is. Um, so I'll see if I can catch that glaze on her eyes. There you go. Beautiful shiny eyes. Love hearts. As they dry, they'll be a bit more um, matte, not as shiny. Then we got her little bobo. Gorgeous, and her earrings. I'm so happy with her. She looks beautiful. The good thing with colouring with markers too, it is so much quicker. It doesn't take as long at all um, because you can cover those large areas quite quickly. Okay guys, that is her done. I will talk to you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I tried to talk the process through as I went so you get an idea of how I use the markers um yeah I hope you enjoy I'll talk to you next time bye guys <laughs>